Hi there, I'm Jazzy Cook and you're watching Side Dance. Side Dance is a podcast that's available on Apple, Spotify and most other major podcast platforms which you can access through Anchor but I'll leave it all linked in the description below. Basically it's 30 to 45 minute episodes looking at big topics in the dance science world and making this more accessible for dance educators. But today I'm here just with a five minute short clip summing up some of the key points from episode one of Side Dance and how we as dance educators can use these in the studio. Episode one is on perfectionism with Sana Norden Bates. Please go and take a listen to the full episode, but for now, hope you enjoy. Before we get into it, we have to define perfectionism. So it's been defined in lots of different ways by researchers over the years, but recently they've sort of reached a consensus, which is good because it makes it easier for us to compare studies. So we sort of have two subcomponents. We have perfectionistic strivings and perfectionistic concerns. Perfectionistic strivings are often seen as the good bits, but that is debatable. This includes things like setting high goals, but sometimes these can become extreme or unrealistic. Um, people like to work hard, but this can turn into overtraining and burnout. And often people are really focused on self-development and self-improvement, which obviously can be a good thing, but sometimes this can start to take over their thoughts or their life. Perfectionistic concerns are easier agreed as problematic by researchers and dancers. These are things like feelings of never being good enough, worry and fear of making mistakes and always needing to work harder. These can lead to avoidance behaviours where we don't try new things because we fear we won't be good at them and other people's views also tend to be really important. Before we go any further, it's important to say that a lot of research in perfectionism in dance tends to be done in Western stage dance styles, so things like classical ballet. This is a fairly narrow band of what dance can be, so that's just important to bear in mind. But research does show that perfectionism seems to be particularly prevalent in dance, so there are two sort of reasons why this might be. The first side is that classical ballet and other formalised dance styles which are often rooted in tradition and heritage, already have a very black and white idea of what might be right and wrong. So it's an ideal of perfect that we're already trying to aspire to. But the other side of it is some form of self-selection. So children who we think might suit ballet as a result of our own stereotypes are often put into ballet. And there's a self-perpetuating cycle where we put this child in this environment where the teaching styles and aesthetics might nurture that perfectionism within a dance context. But why is it a problem? Well, perfectionism always carries increased risk and vulnerability. So although some aspects might be considered positive, it's not a positive thing. If it's not at super high levels, dancers might notice things like frequent dissatisfaction before or after class, elevated performance anxiety and elevated stress levels. And whilst these things aren't abnormal, they might be warning bells. This is a quote taken from Sana from the episode. If your goal is to be perfect, how often are you gonna reach it? There are also bigger risks associated with perfectionism. It's a transdiagnostic vulnerability, which means it might be a predictor for disordered eating, OCD, depression, generalised anxiety in life, and also burnout, which of course is of high relevance to dancers. If you remember the strivings and the concerns that we were talking about at the start of the video, it's really unusual to find people with high perfectionistic strivings and low perfectionistic concerns. So it is often somewhat problematic. But what can we do as dance teachers to help? Well, there's this thing called motivational climate, which refers to the atmosphere or the environment created in the studio. This can be either task involving or ego involving. So a task involving motivational climate is often focused on things like individual progress, whereas an ego involving motivational climate is more focused on things the dancers can't control, things like comparison and less on what they can control, like effort. Considering the motivational climate in a studio is really important because of the relationship that's been found between perfectionism and the perceived motivational climate. There are indications that a strongly ego-involving motivational climate might be encouraging greater levels of perfectionism. This might be especially true when we look at things like comparing dancers because they have no control over this. But it is also important to look at the research methods we use. So often when looking at perfectionism, things like questionnaires have been used, where the dancers rate themselves and their perceptions. If you're perfectionistic, you might be more sensitive to the opinions of others and perceive cues in the environment as threats, which others might not. So that's important to keep in mind. In the studio then, there are things that the dance teachers can do to ensure the optimum motivational climate to support their perfectionistic students. So practically, this looks like things such as pairing students up, facing away from the mirror, and also facing away from other dancers, so maybe having dancers face the bar. Working with imagery can be really good, and also working with artistry to develop communication. Another take from the episode is Sana was talking about how artistry can be a real gift to the perfectionistic student who's less often there by themselves, and when they don't need to think about their perfect feet, it can be really nice for them to remember why they love to dance. 
We could also avoid giving so much feedback all the time and peer feedback might be a really useful medium for this. But when we are giving feedback, it's really important that we remember that our dancers are all good and less good at different things. So we need to recognise every dancer in the studio, even if that's for things that aren't necessarily dance related. There's also a really great dance magazine article that Sana contributed to. There are some really useful suggestions within that, such as developing productive coping skills, being more generous with yourself, and also keeping perfectionism and discipline separate. Sana's advice to students on how to do this is to know who you are and what you want. What's your motivation for dance and when do you find dance class the most rewarding? And you should set your future goals in line with that. There's also a suggestion that CBT based strategies might be useful for managing perfectionism. So looking at the B, the behavioural aspect, as humans, we don't like feeling bad. So we tend to try and avoid this. For the perfectionist, this might look like making mistakes. So they avoid situations where that might happen. A CBT based strategy for overcoming this is exposure. And in a dance setting, that might look like something like improv. Sana's general advice about perfectionism is to be aware of how the word is used. As teachers, we often use perfect in feedback, but what if we could focus less on the positive and the negative and focus more on constructive feedback? Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And if you did, please like and subscribe and share with the dance education world because I would really, really love to reach more teachers. Make sure you take a listen to the full podcast and I'll see you soon.